Okay, uh, hey, so, uh, I don't normally do these kinds of, uh, videos on YouTube. In fact, I haven't put anything on my YouTube channel in ages, and the last time it was something, it was Blood Bowl. Um, I don't think it's anything, anything but Blood Bowl, except for maybe... Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I was talking to someone in a, uh, 3D printing Discord recently about, um, putting files back together in Mesh Mixer. If you've got a model that you're printing, um and the person supplying the files has split uh, the model into multiple pieces so to make it easier to print. Sometimes you don't want it split. Uh, it might be that they've, um, you know, oriented everything for print at a certain size and you want to print at a different scale or they're printing, they set it up for FDM and you think you can print it better just put together in resin. Uh, lots of reasons you might want to stitch back together the pieces of a model. Um, SDL files do have an origin point, so in some cases when you got split files, uh, this is augmented beauty from ritual casting, so if we open up the body file here, uh, this will just take a second, right, so you can see about this, um, and then if I were to open up the left arm, and just append it in mesh mixer, mesh, mesh mixer, boom, uh, because they've got the same origin point when they were split, they save that origin point and they just pop right into where they're supposed to go, even though that was a completely separate file, because they've got the same origin, uh, they're already basically oriented. Uh, so if we prop this hair file in here, for example, that should, yeah, this pops right onto our head. So then you could then uh, either combine these or do a Boolean, uh, um, combination of them, uh, join of them, uh, depending on what your slicing software will handle. I usually find with Box that just joining the shells is fine, you don't have to remesh it. Uh, but in any case, uh, sometimes the um, person who made all the files, let's get rid of these, uh, will have not they like split them up and reoriented them to try and be helpful for uh like fdm printing for example so this tank girl i got from thingiverse I take the body file here and they come in the wrong way so i'm just gonna transform for 90 negative 90 uh, and so she's popping out of this tank hatch, and there's two different halves to this that pop out sort of like at an angle this way and that way. Uh, so if we take that, there's another file hatch here. And so you can see this was actually designed to do the same negative 90 transform to print like, like this. Um, which is not obviously this bit oriented to that bit at all. Uh, so what we do here, first of all, this is two hatch pieces that need to be at different angles. Uh, so we can easily just separate shells. Now we've got two different pieces. Uh, but one way, of course, to do this would be just to transform and then you bring this thing up and then you turn it around that way and then you try and move it this way. And then you kind of go this way, and do a little this way, and a little that way, and then... Oh, that's not that's not the right way. Uh, this way. So this is sort of a pain in the ass, uh, as you can sort of tell. Uh, sometimes help to change this to... I'm already in orthographic. Uh, well, in that case, it sometimes helps to use this. Uh, anyway, we're not doing that. That was the whole point, so let me cancel that. Uh, there is a function here called align. So we got this hatch right here. We do align. And then for the source, a couple of different ways to do this. I think you can align them to an axis or a point or... I, I don't understand pivots at all in Mesh Mixer, but surface scribble is all we need. So once you hit the align tool, it pops up here to show you where it wants to move it. Um, and this is where it was originally. 
Um, and we also want to make sure you can do translate and rotate or translate only. Translate only will move it into the position you're going to select, um, but not actually change its orientation. So if we do this, it should... Yeah, there's some translation without rotation, and then if you have both, you can do it this way. Um, but let's see. We want to... Uh, basically, we're going to draw a section on this little matching bit here, and then draw... This is actually going to go on that side over here, I think. The same on that surface, and it'll automatically match them for us. So let's see, I'm going to start in this back corner. It matters what direction that you match this correctly. Um, like, if you go around this clockwise, there's going to be a difference between if you go around this clockwise and you go around it counterclockwise. Um, but we are going to start in this one, which, if we flip it, let's actually cancel this. Let's, um, just to make this easier to get our heads around. Right, this one is going to go here, that one's going to go there. So I don't have to do flipping and rotating them in my head before I'm doing the uh, thing here. Alright, so this one is going to go here. So if we're going to start in this back corner and go around, let's go to Edit and Align. There's our little ghost. Uh, oh, let's get out of... Are we still in... Yeah. No wonder that was getting weird. Kind of hard to see a little ghost of that surface. There it is. All right. So right, we're starting in this corner. We're gonna left click and just draw a little outline. This is just with the mouse. It's gonna be messy as hell. It's taking an average of all these points in some way that gives it a vector. So if they're a little wobbly, as long as you're averaging out to the right line, that's fine. So that's our first one. And then we go over here to where we want to put the thing. I want to do the same thing, but we're going to hold down the shift key. And it knows we're drawing on this surface. So even though, of course, we're drawing in two dimensions, it's actually taken both of these drawings in three dimensions. It's calculating what the difference is in terms of well, trans what kind of translation and rotation you would need to put that drawing on this one, and then it applies that to the object. So you can see there's a preview of where it ends up. Boom. And it's basically in the right spot. It might be a little, you know, depending on how wobbly you were, be a little tweaking. But once it's this close, you can sort of much more easily go into the transform tool to sort of Inch it into place. Yeah. Uh. There you go. Uh, so accept that. Now to show what happens if you get this wrong. Also, the little drawing you do, it is kind of arbitrary. So I guess you could. Let's, uh, no, let's do this one. And a line. So if we just drew a line between these two points. See if this works. And then hold down shift, draw a line between these two points. Ha ha ha. So, kind of done on purpose. So, in the first one, I think I drew this way. In the second one, I drew this way. This shows why it matters uh, the direction you did it. But let's try that for real, though. A line here to here. And from here to here. And it totally fucked up. Okay. So this is why I'm being a bit more... I guess it might have been pulling in the surface in there, which is facing in a totally different sort of uh, normal direction. Um, so it's usually just better to outline it. Let's, uh, let's try something else. Let's get uh, a head in here. And once again, these have all been oriented for printing, just as if, well, 
90 degrees off that way. So there's anyway, it's not aligned there. So let's start <coughs> the align tool here. Surface scribble, surface scribble, translate and rotate. So uh, it's transparent. That's a little difficult to see what we're doing. All right. Theory. Here. Something more or less like this. Messy circle over here. Hold down shift. Which way around did I go? Oh, well, let's see if she gets her head on backwards. I think I'm going the wrong way. Sideways. That's weird. Let's say I meant to do that. But that's the idea, anyway. Uh, it's, you know, not perfect, and you have to sort of wrap your head around remembering where you drew the first little scribble to draw the second scribble. You're basically, like, drawing a zipper. You can see what, think of it that way, and you're going to be zip like, from start to finish. They're going to be stuck to each other that sort of way. It's not exactly right. Like I said, it's, like, averaging out the planar normal of the shape that you drew in both cases, which I don't, you know, I don't want to pretend to exactly know what that means. It's mass. Uh, but that's it. Yeah. So, it's one way to put stuff back together with in Mesh Mixer without having to deal with the fiddly uh, moving it in this plane and then moving it in that plane and then getting it in the right place, but now it's in the wrong angle and trying to do the rotate, and now it looks like it's rotated the right way, but it's no longer in the right position, and going back and forth. Uh, this cuts out a little bit of that, but... Obviously, you know, takes a little trial and error and a little bit of practice, but there it is. So, thank you for watching. Bye.